Hi guys, today I'm gonna quickly show you how to um, save and load uh, game data. So, um, go to Eclipse Tutorials, as always, um, source, create new package. Tutorial number 9. Um, go to your template, you should have this from previous tutorials. Copy that, paste them to our new um, package. So, you should have this. Um, at this point, I will just copy and paste all the imports. You can do that as well by just uh, pausing the video and then typing everything. Uh, we won't be needing this for this tutorial. Um, so yeah, first of all, I need you to create a, a data structure. Call it save data, or yeah, save data will do. <coughs> and all it will contain is just this. So very simple data structure. Uh, it implements serializable, which means that we can uh, sort of write to a um, disk or to somewhere else. So basically represent an object as a byte array. Um, this is needed for writing to a disk without much um, manual work from our side. Um, serial version UID, you have to get this right and it has to be exactly the same um, wording. Uh, put any number you want. It has to be a long number. This is used to match the data um, structure back to original one. So basically parse it, um, which saves us a lot of time. We don't need to do this um, manually. And what we're going to have is public string name and public integer um, HP, so hit points. Um, this should really be private and have public accessors, but for the simplicity's sake, I'm going to use public. Then we're going to have resource manager. And our resource manager is going to be somewhat general, so we can reuse it uh, in other projects if we wanted to. So resource manager, um, yeah, create new class. I'll just do this. So import basically all the I/O stuff and new I/O stuff. So what we're doing here, um, we have two methods that are static, so we don't need to create an instance of resource manager to call these methods. We have a save method, which takes in a serializable uh, object, so basically any object that can be, that it, uh, implements serializable um, interface can be written out. Um, string file name, so this is basically where we say, uh, what we call our save data file um, on the disk. Um, and then um, there is this structure um, called syntax called throws exception, which means that there, uh, there is something that might go wrong within this method. And we're not going to do anything about it. So we're just going to throw an exception upwards, and then we'll catch it later. So we do, again, something um, you saw in the last tutorial try with resources block, which means that um, it will open new output stream, and if something goes wrong, they will close it automatically, or at least it will try to close it. Path.get file name. Um, this creates a path, then it opens a new output stream to that path, so we could write it, uh, write to it. And finally, OOS, so we're using object output stream, write object and our data. Should be pretty straightforward. I'm gonna just do this so you can see the whole thing. And the other method is load, and we're returning a generic or general rather. Generic and general are actually different things here. Um, we're returning a general object type, so um, we pass a parameter file name. So we need to um, know what file we're loading it from. Again, the same except. Uh, this was new output stream, this is a new input stream, so we can read from it. And we turn, we turn um, read object from the object, object input stream um, object, really. <laughs> uh, so yeah, again, try with the resources block and it will throw an exception if there is any. Okay, save that. Um, this is our data structure. And we go back to our um, graphical user interface. Um, there isn't much to add really, so we're going to do just this. 
Yeah, so you can see the whole thing. Uh, create content. So the first thing, the very first thing we do, um, text field field name, field HP. So uh, we'll have two text fields which we can um, edit. So we can save sort of, and I can show you sort of dynamic saving and stuff like that. Uh, we add a new button, call it button save, um, set an action. So this is basically the stuff that will be executed when uh, the button is clicked. Again, the Lambda operator. Uh, we create a new instance of save data data structure. Uh, Data.name, we get the text from this field. And we also parse uh, this field um, into an integer. So obviously this has to be an integer and we don't really um, do any exception handling. So if there is something that is not parsable to integer, it will throw an exception. Uh, then we do, uh, this is where we catch that exception being thrown um, in the save. So save throws an exception and we catch it here if there is one. We pass uh, data, our data structure, and then we pass the name of the file we, we want to save it as. The thing here is um, don't use directories, so don't use stuff like that here because our resource manager is really simple and will not handle this. It will th simply throw an exception saying this folder does not exist um, and we'll be writing a more robust um, and advanced resource manager in some other tutorials. We catch the exception here and we simply say I couldn't, uh, the application couldn't save um, and we display the message, um, the error message, why you couldn't save. Now the button load, uh, call it load, set an action again, this will be executed on the button press. Uh, this time we load the data from that file that we created. So save data, resource manager load, it takes in a file name, which is uh, one that's saved exactly the same one as we saved it as. Um, then we have to typecast it to um, save data data structure. So this is called casting. Um, when we cast one object to another, um, we get an object and then we cast that type uh, to save data type. Then we set field name to name um, field and field HP again, we get the string value of data.hp. If there is an exception, we say um, couldn't load save data um, and there is an error message. Finally, um, this is our layout. So everything is going to be in a vertical box. So V box 10 is the gap between each element in the vertical box. We add field name, field HP. So they're going to be um, in a vertical layout and final button save button load. Everything is going to be in the center. So this is how elements are aligned within the vertical box. And finally, set padding. So that's um, like the margin between the border of uh, our frame or window and the vertical box. And the rest is um, the same from the template. So yeah, if we run this, um, we have, um, so this is our margin. So this is padding um, of, unit, of um, 50 units. This is our uh, name field, so I'm going to just type Thomas um, HP 100. So uh, you will see a file appear here now. So if I save this, yeah, it created a file called one.save. Um, if you put something like a folder and it didn't exist, it'll probably throw an, uh, it will definitely throw a message, uh, an error message saying folder doesn't exist. Now if I close the application, um, rerun it, and instead of typing anything I'll just click load. And it reads from this file that we just created. Again you can modify the program to do all sorts of things, it's just a basic tutorial to show you how um, you can save data. Um, again resource manager will probably be a bit more complicated if you're dealing with a larger project and we might do one at some point when we finish the basics. Um, and yeah, so, uh, 
so next time I think I'll be doing again some kind of menu, possibly Call of Duty, um, maybe Advanced Warfare, maybe, maybe Modern Warfare. Um, so yeah, stay tuned and thanks for watching.